Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. Hi, today's tip and trick video is going to go over seven characteristics of watercolor paper. Tip number one is that watercolor paper comes in sheets, blocks, and tablets, and a standard sheet of watercolor paper is 22 by 30. Tip number two is that watercolor paper comes in different weights. 140 pound is a standard weight and 300 pounds is a standard weight. There are brands that have papers of different weights lower and in between and higher than those two weights. Tip number three is that the weight of the paper is determined by taking a standard sheet 22 by 30 and 500 of those sheets determines the weight of the paper. A thinner piece of paper, five sheets or five sheets, 500 sheets of those will weigh 140 pounds. The thicker 300 pound paper, 500 sheets of that will weigh 300 pounds. So that's how you get the weight of the paper. Tip number four is how to tear a sheet of watercolor paper rather than cut it. To tear a sheet of watercolor paper, I just take my ruler and measure out the size that I want. And this is actually a half sheet of watercolor paper already. I had torn it down. And so I'm going to go measure for a quarter sheet. So I just put two marks on the paper and this is a 140 pound paper. And I use a ruler with a little bit of a sharp edge. And once I've made those two marks, I pull at an angle and press down on the ruler at the same time and with 140 pound paper, it easily tears. And then I've got a quarter sheet of paper. You can also tear 300 pound paper, but that's a little more involved. And so what I do for 300 pound paper is I'll lay my ruler on the paper where I want to tear it. And then I usually will either make a line with a pencil or just take my brush with a little bit of water on it and then I run the water down the paper a couple times, get it all saturated, and then it's a little easier to tear 300 pound paper. You can also cut watercolor paper, and uh, there's no trick to that. It's just putting a line across the paper and cutting it with a pair of scissors. Tip number four is that the watercolor paper comes in different surfaces. So I have hot press, I have cold press, and rough as the standard surfaces. And I'll try to show those in, let's see, the side camera over here so that maybe you can see those surfaces a little better. And as it sounds, the rough paper has the uh, most texture on the surface. And the next surface down, cold press paper, has a little texture to it. And hopefully you can see that in the camera up there. And hot press paper is smooth. So hot press paper is made by uh, forming the paper and then they uh, run it through a press with heat to press the fibers together.
cold press has some texture due to the felt that it is laid on. Again, there's the cold press. I'm not sure if my camera will focus though. Maybe. If it's going to be nice to me. Uh, not today. There it goes. So I think you can see a little bit of texture on that surface. And then the rough again has the most texture. So that means the brushwork, uh, the look of your paint and how also techniques work on the different kinds of paper will be different. Tip number five is that watercolor paper comes with sizing in it and some papers have sizing on both the surface front and back and the interior of the paper and the sizing is generally gelatin and the sizing will help keep the watercolor in pl place when you paint on the paper and it won't leave or won't uh, blur into the areas around it and it also keeps it from seeping into the middle of the paper and not showing up as much on the surface. Um, so the two brands that I tend to use the most are Fabriano and Arches and they both have interior, interior and surface sizing. Tip number six is that you can use both sides of your watercolor paper. Depending on the brand, most will have sizing on both sides. The uh, surface may feel just a little different if the paper is sized differently on the front and back. And the way that I tell the uh, front of the paper when I first uh, open up my sheets of paper before I've torn it, at least with Arches and Fabriano, they have watermarks in the bottom right corner. And if you look in the upper left camera, you should see a little bit of the watermark for the Fabriano paper that I have in my hand. So that watermark is always, always reads to the front of the paper. And uh, so if you have the watermark on your paper still, you can tell what side is the front. And then I can also tell by looking in the light at the surface and if it feels a little more rough or mechanical on cold press and hot press or uh, cold press and rough paper, then that rougher side is the, the back side. So the front side will be slightly smoother. And on hot press paper, I can't tell. It's, it's the same on both sides. So uh, I use both sides of the paper. I generally start with the front and then if um, maybe I want to redo the painting or I have a um, paper that I used the back already, then I can use the front or the vice versa. The last tip is tip number seven. Tip number seven is that art, artist grade watercolor paper is 100% cotton and it will list that on the front of the packaging or on the paper or in the information about the paper. The difference between student grade paper and artist grade paper is that student grade paper is most generally made with a cheaper version of fibers and so they might use pulp, wood pulp, and sometimes a mix of wood pulp and cotton fibers. And those wood pulp fibers are going to have uh, acids in them that over time can eat away at the paper and also uh, turn the paper yellow. The uh, acid-free 100% cotton artist grade paper will uh, be archival and last for hundreds of years. So to go over to the student grade for a minute, student grade paper is fine to try things on, but if you are still not having success with your watercolor um, painting, you might try uh, changing to some artist grade paper. And uh, part of the reason is these are test samples that I did with this uh, booklet of watercolor paper 
that is student grade and uh, it has issues with when I scrub it tore at the paper and um, different colors uh, it it marred the surface of the paper it wanted to dry a lot faster and so I ended up getting blooms more easily and then when I used masking fluid the mask was okay but masking tape on student grade paper tore the surface of the paper and in this wet on wet sample I ended up with a lot of blooms happening and also dry areas so uh, when I wet this to start and then went back and put some color on part of the paper had already started to dry and left this very unusual um, kind of wet and dry look and when I tried to do a solid wash of color I can see my strokes and then on the graded wash this one doesn't look too bad but um, I just didn't quite get it graded as well so uh, student grade paper can end up being uh, frustrating it might save you some money in the beginning but you might uh, go through more of it and not uh, be able to learn the watercolor techniques as well as if you would spend a little bit more and buy the professional grade watercolor paper and uh, a sheet of watercolor paper as I said in tip number one is 22 by 30 and you can tear that down into uh, probably close to about eight pieces of paper about this size and you can use the front and the back so um, I would highly suggest uh, trying a sheet of professional grade watercolor paper and see if you like that better than the student grade so I hope these uh, tips and characteristics of watercolor paper were helpful and if you have a tip or trick or technique video that you would like to see having to do with watercolor please comment below and I will add that to my list. Hope you have a good day. Bye.